Bulkheads, what are they and where do they come from? My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the story of how I built the Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Well, bulkheads are those structural members that divide up a boat athwartships, but they also add tremendous strength to the hull. Now, I'm just about to start building the very first one. It'll be the one right up by the bow here. But before I can do that, I have to determine the camber of the deck and the camber of the cabin top. So that's step one before I get stuck into those bulkheads. A lot to do, Rovers. Time to crack on. So what I'm doing here is I've got a piece of wood, just a scrap piece of thin plywood, and I'm going to make a template out of it for the deck. And the deck I want to have a camber, not very much camber, about an inch. So. Uh, what I've done is I've made a line in the center. It's up two inches. And then on the ends, I've put a line that's one inch up. So there's an inch in the difference. And now I'm just going to lock this in place here. Uh, let's see. To do that, I'll just make a little line. Put the nail in. It doesn't have to be overly tight. It's a bit cold today, that's the reason for the gloves, it's, uh, it's minus 12 Celsius and inside here it's probably minus 11 Celsius. Okay, that's good. I'll try to squeeze that in there. Okay, so we're nice and tight and uh, pass me the camera by. So my friend Brian McIsaac is here. He's going to give me a hand and uh, he's going to help spring this with me. Uh, I guess, Brian, we can probably put another nail in there, eh? Yeah, if we wanted to, so you yeah. can mark them out. Go ahead and do that. You let me use this thing? Oh, hell yeah. Don't let anybody else know about it. They'll be jealous. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Uh, can you see? No, just hold this here. Just you hold it. it. Okay. So I'll just put the camera. Oh, actually, right. So first of all, I'm just looking overall on it because I want to make sure it's fair, and it's looking it's looking pretty good. Let me just. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good by eyes. So Brian's holding it there, and I'll just. bit of pressure on that. Do the same on here. I think I put some pressure on it. Okay. So let that away and so we're left with a nice line and you can see there's a nice gentle curve. It's the deck, so I don't want a lot of curve. On top of the cabin, I'll have a much, much more camber, but this is just the deck, so looking pretty good. Now it's just a matter of uh, taking the nails out and taking a jigsaw, cutting to this line, and I'll have my template for the deck. So while I was at it, I decided to mark the um, 
the camber for the cabin top, which I'm making two and a half inches over the eight feet. And I've marked the deck, you know, as you just saw me doing one inch. So now I'll, I'll be able to get two different cambers from the same template. I'm only just going to cut the one for the deck right now though. Okay, so this is all about the bulkheads. This is bulkhead seven, or maybe I should say this is where bulkhead seven is going to be. So the first thing you want to do is make a template of bulkhead seven. So let me just see. So from a previous video, you saw me put all these lines in and they mark the plumb lines of what are the sides of the bulkhead. Then I I was pretty excited to get going on this, so I didn't film it. So I'm trying to fill you in on what I have done, which is taken some scraps of what we call door skin. It's just uh, material. It's one eighth inch um, Maranti plywood, not expensive, and cut it into strips and then just create the shape. So it's a, it was a, just a straight piece of wood and then I scribed the edge to it and I'll show you this in more detail on the next one and then glued it up using nothing more than this little glue gun. Again, very inexpensive and you just put a little dab of it in the corner joints and then squeeze them together and it's pretty instant and then just put a cross brace across just to keep it from racking which means coming out of its shape um, to get the plywood to the right shape just use a jigsaw to get it roughly there and then clean it up with a little block plane and let's take a look at it so when we actually put it on our lines so you can see it's on its line there and it's on its line on the bottom it's a pretty tight joint it's it's certainly the beauty of the 650 is this is not a piano. We are not building a piano, which means that uh, because we're going to be filling this with large fillets and then um, epoxy over top, or sorry, fiberglass over top of that, uh, it's actually a good thing to have a little space in there so that the epoxy can squeeze in behind. And you do that joint procedure to both sides, which makes for and a very, very strong joint. And then over on this side, we have the same thing. We have nice and tight. This side's nice and tight. I'll be making that just a little thinner. Once I lay this down on a piece of ply, which is the next step, um, then I'll be bringing the plywood bulkhead in and test fitting that and then taking a little bit off so there's enough space behind. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to place our template down on our ply. And when we're happy with it and it all makes sense, then we trace around the edge and then we get our, uh, we get an outline of what is bulkhead seven. Then we can remove our template We're going to uh, just place it to the side right now, just in case we need it again. Um, if everything goes well, we won't, and then we will uh, move on to the next step. So when I laid it out and used the camber on this piece of ply, which you saw me uh, spring with Brian the other day, well, I thought, you know, that was going to be enough but when I put it on the actual piece of plywood and saw what it looked like, I wasn't happy. So I made a new camber for the cabin and that's this piece of oriented strand board. You can see it's quite, quite a deal or quite a bit more powerful than the original camber. Now that's, that's five and a half inches over eight feet and the bulkhead one is only low less than three feet wide. So it's only a little segment of this that we'll be using for the camber. And I'll show you that next. So all traced out, this is what it looks like. I've taken into account the uh, shear stringer and I'll be cutting that out. I've also taken into account the cabin top and the cabin top 
what you're looking at here is the new camber. So, I mean, it really doesn't look out of place. That's quite a, quite a good camber and I'll be sticking with that. And then the deck camber, which is this line right here, um, that's, uh, that's the very same camber as the top. All right, so we're all set now to take a jigsaw to this and cut it out. Well, there we go. We've uh, just completed cutting it with the jigsaw. So now I'll just take it inside and do a test fit. Okay, so let's test the fit of this first bulkhead. Okay, so I'll try to hold the camera up while I do this. So you can see we're on our lines and it's a pretty good fit. Now I did um, take a, a little block plane to that to make sure the bottom, that bottom edge needs to come back a bit, but that's no problem. And coming up the sides here, we're pretty good. I think we can actually move this bulkhead over. Yeah, there we go. And it goes tight. So let's see. Yeah, we've got about we've got about three sixteenths right along here. That'll be fine. I'll squeeze a nice fillet in there. It'll get through. Um, we're running, most importantly, we're running right down our lines. I can bring that back, like I said, when I go to do the glue up. That's, uh, that'll be the trick in itself, putting some weights against this so I can keep it on its lines. So we're looking really good. We are good to go. Um, I still have some work to do to this bulkhead. I have to cut an inspection hatch out of the center bit here. That'll be the next job. All right, so here I am. I'm, I've got bulkhead 7. It's ready. This is actually the forward side of bulkhead 7. There was a flaw in the plywood, so I had sort of oriented everything so I'd be cutting that out. This is an inspection hatch that is in the bulkhead. This line right here, that's actually a support that will be going forward, perpendicular to the bulkhead for strength, because this is really the crash bulkhead, if you will. So I uh, like everything we do in building. We don't really like cuts like that. They're very weak. So I'm going to do a radius. So I'll be using a Dixie cup as the radius. So I just line it up on my lines and then get myself a nice curve. Do that on all four edges. And then I'll be taking a saw to this. The reason for the masking tape is because, well, you guessed it, it's because the plywood has a tendency to splinter when you go across the grain. But uh, when you go with the grain, it's generally okay, but when you go across the grain, it tends to splinter. So the tape will stop most of that, not all of it. Anyway, time to crack on with this. So I've drilled a little bit of a uh, little hole here just to get started, but we'll just use a jigsaw now to follow the lines around. And by the way, a jigsaw will cause ripping on the surface that you're sawing on. The nice surface is the underneath. Well, as it turns out, this is the forward side. The after side, that the side that I'll generally see, should have the cleaner of the two cuts. Well, it's time to go out and check the hens and see if they laid us any eggs, but we had a snowstorm. Look at this. Paradise, 
Well, Bulkhead 7 is all set to go. I'm going to just uh, put a couple of dabs of glue, almost like tack welding, uh, the bulkhead in. I'll do that and let it harden overnight, and then it'll be nice and stiff, and I can put a proper fillet all the way around. But just to hold it in place, I've got a lead weight on the bottom, and I have the uh, bulkhead slightly canted aft. So we have about, oh almost a quarter inch with three sixteenths forward of its line and then it comes up to pretty much just on its line at the top and then to hold the top in place I have these clamps just little spring clamps set up either side of it let me see if I can get a better picture um, and they'll just hold the the bulkhead so I can get those little dabs of glue in. I don't really need to put a lot in, maybe four or five, a uh, small amount of epoxy, just let it harden overnight. Now, a couple of the other things I've done, I have sanded back the hull sides uh, about six inches either side of where the uh, bulkhead will be glued, and that was to give me a keyway because the S1, uh, you know, even though it feels rough, I just wanted to give it a good keyway. And I've also sanded on the inside here, forward of Bulkhead 7, so that it'll be ready for paint because it'll be an awkward position to get into when I get all the other pieces in here. All right, time to crack on and mix up some thickened epoxy. Well, I ended up mixing up about twice as much as I needed, uh, lesson learned, but uh, I have the, well, I'm calling these little welded taps, but there's actually quite a bit in there on account of the extra I mixed. We'll just let that harden overnight, and then tomorrow I'll come back and I'll get the real fillet put in with a bit of glass. I'd like to take a minute to add two new names to our benefactor's bulkhead, Rich Burnett and Dan Fessler. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, Rovers, it's a day later, and Bulkhead 7, as you can see just over my shoulder here, is installed. It's nice and solid, but it still needs big heavy fillets to go all the way around and fiberglass to cover those. I'll be doing that in another episode because we have a big storm approaching. It's expected to give us approximately two feet of snow. But if I wait just a few days, I'll have better temperatures, better accessibility, and most importantly, I will have Mrs. Rover's help to do that fiberglassing. So, as always, thanks for watching. Well, Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. 
Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.